Today I'm reading from classic fairy tales, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Once upon a time there were three bears who lived together in a house in a wood. One of them was a little small wee bear and one was a middle-sized bear and the other was a great huge bear. They each had a bowl of their porridge. A little bowl for a little small wee bear, a middle-sized bowl for a middle-sized bear, and a great bowl for a great huge bear. And they each had their chair to sit in. A little chair for a little small wee bear, a middle-sized chair for a middle-sized bear, and a great chair for a great huge bear. And they each had a bed to sleep in. A little bed for the little small wee bear, a middle-sized bed for the middle-sized bear, and a great bed for the great huge bear. One day, after they made the porridge for their breakfast, they poured it into the bowls. They walked out into the woods while the porridge was cooling, so they wouldn't burn their mouths by beginning to eat it too soon. In the village, they just beyond the forest lived a little girl who loved to run through the long grass, picking wildflowers. Her hair fell in golden locks about her shoulders, so everyone called her Goldilocks. This morning, however, Goldilocks wandered too far, and before she realized it, she found herself deep in the shadowy wood. Soon they came upon the three bears' cottage. Glad to find the house in the middle of the forest, she ran from the window to window and peeked in. Seeing no one at home, she went to the door and tried the latch. Now the three bears, who themselves were very polite creatures, never thought that anyone come into their home, house without an invitation, so they always left their door unlocked. But Goldilocks, who was sometimes so curious she forgot her manners, opened the door and invited herself in. The moment she smelled the cooling porridge, Goldilocks remembered how hungry exploring the forest made her. If she had waited for the three bears to come home, she might have been invited for breakfast, for there were good-natured bears and hospitable. But instead, she decided to help herself. First, she tasted the porridge of the great huge bear, but that was too hot for her. And then she tasted the porridge for the middle-sized bear, but that was too cold for her. And then she went to the porridge of the little small wee bear and tasted that. And that was neither too hot nor too cold, but just right. And she liked it so well that she ate it all up. Then Goldilocks sat down in the chair of the great huge bear but that was too hard for her. And then she sat down in the chair in the middle-sized bear, but that was too soft for her. And then she sat down in the chair of the small wee bear, and that was neither too hard nor too soft, but just right. So she seated herself in it, and there she sat until the poor little chair broke into pieces and down she came, plump upon the ground. Then Goldilocks went upstairs into the bedroom where the three bears slept. And first she lay down upon the bed of the great huge bear, but that was too high at the head of her. The next she lay down upon the bed in the middle-sized bear, but that was too high at foot for her. And then she lay down upon the bed of the little small wee bear, and that was neither too high at the head or at the foot, but just right. So she covered herself up comfortably and lay there until she fell fast asleep. By this time, the three bears thought that the porridge would be cool enough to eat. So they came home to have their breakfast, but things were not how they had left them. Looking into his bowl, the great huge bear said in a great huge voice, Somebody has been eating my porridge. Then the middle-sized bear said in her middle-sized voice, Somebody has been tasting my porridge. And the little small wee bear cried, Somebody has been tasting my porridge and has eaten it all up. 
Then the great huge bear looked at his chair. Somebody has been sitting in my chair. And the middle sized bear said, and somebody has been sitting in my chair. And the poor little small wee bear cried, somebody has been sitting in my chair and has broken it all to pieces. Then the three bears thought that they should make a further search of their house. So they went upstairs into their bedrooms. Goldilocks had pulled the pillows of the great huge bear out of its place. Somebody has been lying in my bed, said the great huge bear in his great rough gruff voice. And Goldilocks had also pulled the pillow of the middle sized bear out of its place. Somebody has been lying in my bed, said the middle sized bear in the middle sized voice. And when the little small wee bear came to look in his bed, there was a pillow in its place and upon the pillow was the head of Goldilocks, which was not in its place, for she had no business there. Somebody has been lying in my bed, and here she is, said the little small wee bear in this, his little small wee voice. Goldilocks had heard in her sleep the great rough gruff voice of the great huge bear, and the middle sized voice of the middle sized bear but it was only as if she had heard someone speaking in a dream. But the little small wee voice in this little small wee bear was sh so sharp and so shrill that it woke her at once. Up she started, and when she saw the three bears on one side of the bed, she tumbled out of the other side and ran to the window. The window was open because the three bears being good, tidy bears, always open their bedroom windows in the morning. Out Goldilocks jumped and ran as fast as she could run, never looking behind her. What happened to her after? I cannot tell. But the three bears never saw anything more of her. The end.